deal with airplane peanuts. There's a conspiracy theory. The last hope is okay. Let's do a some another Zika Ebola operation where um, uh, we scare everybody. You know, uh, apparently twenty thousand to fifty thousand people a year die from the flu. So there's people dying all the time of the flu, but you never hear about it. But if you take this human coronavirus, which is on the back of Lysol, if you look at the back of a Lysol uh, spray can, it says it lists all the viruses that it kills, and it says human coronavirus. And it, uh, so it's not like it's new. It's just like the technical name for a kind of flu. Flu is like there's a bunch of different strains of flu and they have a bunch of different names. So one theory is this is just a psyop to fuck the economy up and that it's working. If that's what it is, it's working because the stocks, uh, I don't know anything about stocks, but apparently they tumbled and like the economy is like getting taking a big hit. So that's a theory that it's all just an operation, just like Zika, just like Ebola, you know, and then one person died in the United States and everybody's freaking out. 50,000 people a year die from the flu. So you got, I mean, six people a year die from like coconuts falling on their head or something like that. So one person died in Washington and it was an old lady. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I have no idea. So then the question becomes, is it possible that we can alter that? Is it possible that we can alter that with the communication that we have today, with all the knowledge that we've gathered up, maybe our ideas of things being natural, or unnatural, or, or archaic? Maybe we're going to be able to reason through that. Well, I think that the computer's natural. I think the computer is yes. like bee pollen. Yeah. I, think, I think it's like honey. I think it's something that the, the animal makes. Well, it's a, um, I think the computer is a, uh, the internet is the mycelium, the internet is the yes. mycelium, and the computer is the, the technology is the fungal growth that's growing off of the, this network. So when you see a computer, a PC, you're actually looking at a little fungal extrusion from the network that we currently call the internet. And it's it, the more of these things that grow out yeah. of, of time, then the more advanced it becomes because the things seem to be working together to make each of them better. Yeah. What uh, conspiracy theories do you believe that are important for people to think about, would you say? Um, Kennedy was not killed by a lone gunman with no connections to any other situation, government, you know. I believe that JFK was removed from office uh, by a group of people that had very uh, different interests. But this is the question of like deep state. So these are powerful people yeah. that are able now to dictate uh, through basically the threat of violence, what the uh, presidents, the surface powerful people in our society. Yeah, I mean, I've not, again, I'm not, I, I, I want another investigation into 9 11, not because I think that George Bush pressed a button and made 9 11 happen, but because we invaded the country of Iraq and then we, uh, you know, 15 out of 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. Uh, there was tons of stuff in the 9 11 report that didn't make sense to anybody. Uh, there's tons of stuff about that day that I feel like we just don't know. Another theory is, man, there's there's a theory that <clears throat> I don't know. The people are saying we can't even see viruses. They're too small to even see. Like we could see bacteria, but even through an electron microscope, apparently we can't see viruses. So that's why when you go to uh, Google and you, 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 you put in virus, it's going to show you a bunch of CGI pictures. Like it's never like an actual picture of a virus in a cell. It's all CGI, and, and when you do that, you're like, shit. So people, um, I don't know, man. I don't know, maybe, like, how do we know what the fuck is going on? How do we know if we can't see it? So I, I've grown into a person that I don't believe shit unless I could see it or I could prove it for myself. Otherwise, you don't have to believe in shit. You could just say, I don't know. I don't believe you, but I don't know. I don't, you don't have to make a choice, you know? Like, oh, you, ha you either have to believe or not. Like, I don't know, dude. You know, after so many, God, how many lives does it take? How many more Ebolas and all? How many more before you go, okay, enough of the shit? How many does it take? Another conspiracy theory, Joke World has 44,000 subs on YouTube, but only 6,000 followers on Instagram. If you like this channel, then you'll definitely like what we're posting on Instagram. We're featuring a new comedian every single day. Go follow link in bio. We're sending everyone free stickers. This is what we were talking about earlier. So this is like I did just a find and replace in the, uh, in the book of John, which is my favorite gospel in the Bible. It's the most psychedelic one. Just trying to see what happens if I plug in simulation theory into the Bible to see how it sounds. I'll just read it to you. In the beginning was the code, 
and the code was with the programmer, and the code was the programmer. He was with the programmer in the beginning. Through him all things were programmed. Without him nothing was programmed that has been programmed. In him was life, and that life was the upgrade of all mankind. The upgrade shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not downloaded it. The true upgrade that upgrades everyone was coming into the simulation. He was in the simulation, and though the simulation was programmed through him, the simulation did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of the programmer. <laughs> It's so funny because you're looking at like basically the idea is when you do the translation, if this is a simulation, then the programmer re recognized that the AI inside the simulation had reached a level of sentience that it was actually experiencing suffering. The programmer feeling this incredible rush of empathy and compassion put went into the simulation as an avatar to try to create an upgrade using his own body as the means to do it he had his uh he and he allowed his own simulation to destroy him as a sign of love for the thing which he had programmed jesus so, christ <laughs> that's that's what they called him yeah but that's the idea <laughs> <laughs> i would believe in simulation theory before that yeah, yeah. and that i believe that I don't believe in flat earth, but I think there's something that is making these guys think that. Yeah. And like that where there's smoke, there's fire. That Not that there is a flat plane or anything like that, but something isn't adding up that they're going fucking crazy. Like, and that could be simulation theory. Like they went all the way down. I see what you're saying. Yeah. They're going all the way down. Like they like keep breaking down molecules more and more and more to this one scientist said he's found binary code, like ones and zeros. Like, so deep into mm -hmm. it, you keep slicing and dicing. Mm -hmm. Ones and zeros. That sounds like a computer program to me. So I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I And here's the whole thing. Nobody knows except for the highest levels of fucking NASA of what's really going on. If you sit there and go, NASA's told us everything that's true all the time, you're in denial. They've lied. They've been caught lying a lot. Well, I lie all the time, so I know that they're lying. Right, you know right, what I mean? right, I mean, we, right, right. It's human nature that we lie. But you're not okay? running a billion dollar enterprise. Right now, I know, but the, I'm just I know this podcast is doing well. In the mm -hmm. in Tibetan Buddhism, it's called the Tulku system, where they take children and they recognize stuff from past lives, and they'll oh. like pick that, and that's how they know who like the next Dalai Lama is going to be. Who is the next Dalai Lama? Do we know? Well, they, they don't know yet because you have to die. Could it be your kid? No way, because th technically the way that would work is no, because the, the idea is the soul of the awakened being, when the body drops, chooses another. Ooh, the, another portal. Another portal. portal, yes. And then like there's all these signs and, and the signs lead. It's very much like the three wise men in the Bible. It like, right. leads people to the child and then they bring the possessions that used to belong to the former uh, incarnation and then, but they mix it in with all this other stuff. Wow. And the baby like picks the glasses and picks the thing Whoa. and then that confirms it's the baby. And then they take the baby. It's a huge honor for the parents, but it's also very controversial. And the Dalai Lama has, I think, kind of hinted that maybe that system might be on the way out actually. Why? I like that system. Well, yeah, but then, you know, there's the, the criticism. I do, too. I think it's cool. But the criticism of it is like, you mean it's some kind of like theocracy where the priests essentially steal a child and, yeah. and, and like condition the child to. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the. Yeah, that's there has I mean. to be a sacrificial lamb, right? Someone has to be the thing. I love your attitude about I mean, I think it's for the, the way it's been explained to me is at least in those times in Tibet, it was just a huge honor it would be essentially like someone coming to you and saying that you're a royalty or that you would have wow. a child and they're like oh your child's a royalty they even they anoint you yeah you're like yeah. um it, it's as if like you have a child and, and your kid becomes a kardashian like you get anointed in american culture exactly. you become holier than thou that's right well yeah they're so close to having little nanobots that swim around in your body and fix shit that's bad yep that's right and there are people there are people who will tell you no it's never going to work. They're never going to reverse the aging process. They're, They're so close. They're so close in so many ways. There was some new um, um, thing that I tweeted really recently 
I need to send the article. Uh, I sent the article to Ron to Patrick, but I need to try to read it and decipher it myself. But in leafing through it, essentially they found some new drug that actually is showing to reverse the aging process. It lengthens telomeres. Yeah. And they're like, this is the first thing they've ever found that lengthens telomeres. And you know, now they have to do these big studies on it and figure out like what is going on and what it, what is. But it's essentially reversing the aging process. The aging process is a biological thing, and it seems to me that they have at least the possibility of figuring out some pretty incredible aspects of it. At least the possibility. Dude, I mean, if you think about, like, if you look at pictures from the 1950s oh, yeah. of people your age, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't, they were pretty fucked up. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you, because yeah. you were, you had no idea what, like, d d any kind, like, dietary standards. Mm -hmm. You thought cigarettes were good for you. Yep. There were no, there was no environmental regulations. People were fucking rubbing radium cream on their balls you know about that right like people like radium used to get put into cosmetic products the idea was that radium who's rubbing cosmetics on their balls i would if i that's the government trying to kill stupid people <laughs> that's, that's what it is it's not like a, not a bad theory cream for your balls guys are like i'm in when, when do your when do your balls need cream radioactive cream for your balls the deep state is only a term for unelected largely mm -hmm. power factions in washington dc that outlive any presidential administration. These are people that might work at the State Department. They might work at the Defense Department. Uh, these are people that are not always working officially in any government capacity. Mm -hmm. They might be private companies. They might be uh, military contractors. They might be people at Boeing or Raytheon or General Dynamics. And they constitute uh, a, a group of people that Trump kind of called the swamp, but Trump had really no interest in draining the swamp, but he was he articulated these things, and this is what it is. You have a lot of interested parties that have budgets that they want, big budgets. Everybody wants a budget in Washington, whether you, you know what it is, they want money. Um, and these are the people who who really control president. So this idea that the president is the be all end all has got to be smashed. I'm I'm I have subtle conspiracy theories, <laughs> but they're but they're ones that are so which unpopular. Which one? Which one? I I'm even afraid to say it because people will go. People get offended when I say this. Which one? Which one? I think uh, the government created AIDS. Okay. To kill black people and gays. Okay. I believe. Yeah, that. I mean, if you re read the book by Bill Cooper, he talks about basically that. Yeah. They created a gay agenda. And there's nothing against gay people. Well, there was great, great gay agenda, and then made AIDS to kill them off. Um, I wouldn't doubt it. If I would, if they could do it, they would do it. I wouldn't doubt it. But when you hear, uh, there was a guy on Joe Rogan's pos podcast, is is Doctor Doucheberg or something like that. With the, with the one Callum was on, M yes. where the guy was saying that AIDS is just because of drug use. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I saw. I yeah. listened to some of that. He, basically, what he's saying is. <clears throat> Um, AIDS is a condition. You know, AIDS is like AIDS acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Mm -hmm. It means your immune system is broke. It means your engine is broke, you know? So a lot of things can cause that. Malnutrition, um, a whole shitload of viruses can, can make your immune system stop working. So in the case of AIDS, um, originally before it was called AIDS, it was called GRID, gay-related uh, immune deficiency. It was a it was a gay disease because in the seventies all the people that were showing up with their immune system shot were gay, so they yeah. were thinking shit. And the gay people were marching, going "fuck, why are you guys ignoring us? We, fucking all these gay people are dying. Don't ignore us. We need funding. We need to find out what this fuck what the fuck this is." They were making a lot of noise, going "why are you guys calling it gay related immune deficiency? This is bullshit." So <clears throat> they decided to look into it. They took uh, this now. This is according to Doucheberg, yeah. right? They took. Um, a bunch of people that were dying of AIDS and they all did tests on them and they found out that 40% uh, of them had HIV of all these people. So just from that report, they just ran with HIV causes AIDS. But they didn't even, no one asked like, what about the people that didn't have HIV? Why are they still dying of AIDS? They didn't give a shit about that. They just went full blown. It's, we're gonna call it AIDS now. We're not gonna call it GRID no more. I think there's almost something scary 
about VR. It's not just that it's cumbersome, that you have to put on gear, and I had to put on a goggle, and then head side over that, and you got to hold these things. It's not that. There's something that people are uncomfortable with. Yeah. Like, in, internally. Like, they're introducing their wife to the new man that's going to fuck her. Wow. Crazy. That's crazy. There's something about VR that I think people secretly know. Like, if it is as good as Oculus and HTC, HTC. if it's as good as this now and no one even knows about it, what is it going to be like in 50 years? Indistinguishable from reality. A hundred percent. Yeah. In 100%, they will figure out a way to put some heptactic suit. Haptic. Haptic. Yeah. Haptic. Haptic. Haptic suit. They'll, and even better than that, they're going to figure out how to just charge certain parts of your brain to experience certain things. Like you might, yeah. They might be able to give you an artificial feeling of heat. You can look at your life and see that in the continuum of just your life, you've, you've basically reincarnated. If you look at you right. now versus when you were a baby... You it's, have reincarnated. It's two completely different forms. Right. And then also, if you look at the phases of your life, you realize, like, oh, shit, it's some, like, far back, it might as well have been a different life. You, it's a different house. It's right. A, you know, and, and the older you get, the more you realize just how true that is. And yet there seems to be some kind of thread running through it all, right. which is the identity or, or the a sense of self or, or, or being something. So... Uh, so that my the way I've been taught about reincarnation is that it's more like a momentum thing. It's like anything that has momentum in the universe, uh, that momentum in some way that energy keeps going. But right. but the it gets transferred into other things. Yeah, that's right. it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's just a natural. That's that's a super scientific approach. Either way, not all of the patients that they did. The, the tests on, according to Duesberg, had HIV. So what the fuck were they dying? Uh, how were they getting uh, their immune system shot? So they never really got into that. They just said HIV, boom. So what they ended up doing is when people came up with a, an HIV positive test result, they would just get them on AZT, which is a medication that they stopped using for cancer patients because it was killing them. The AZT was killing them before the cancer. So they had a, they had a shelve the AZT, but now with this new AIDS, they go, let's bring back AZT and anybody that has is test positive for HIV, we'll give them AZT. And the people were dying of AZT, not AIDS, some of them people, who knows? According to Duesberg, yeah. were like, were, were, um, they were given AZT because they had an HIV positive result when in reality, they probably would have lived if they would have just figured out how to control the HIV. Yeah. So what they, they ended up doing, they ended up realizing, okay, they knew that. You know, let's, let's, let's stop AZT. Oh, we got a new cocktail. This is better and it was safer. So they stopped, they stopped AZT for cancer treatment and then they stopped it for AIDS treatment or HIV treatment. And the, the, the conspiracy theory is that they're dying from the drugs, not from the HIV. The drugs are fucking them. That's why they had to pull AIDS. They don't give AZT out to AIDS patients more than they used to. They used yeah. to do it for cancer too. They don't do it anymore. Why? Because it's too fucking dangerous.